Hello everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, I will demonstrate how to use R to perform principal component analysis. As we have studied earlier, principal component analysis is a method to reduce the dimension of a data. Just to remind you, suppose you are doing an experiment where you have hundreds and thousands of variables. For example, you may be doing a gene expression studies for different tumor samples. So, you have hundreds of genes and their gene expression data. So, the dimension of your data is 100 in scale of 100. Neither you can visualize that data in two dimension and also sometimes it becomes very difficult to analyze that data that such higher dimensional data. So, that is why we use principal component analysis to reduce the dimensionality of the problem. So, today I will demonstrate PCA for two problems. The first one is a, a synthetic data. I just cooked up the data, a small data set is not really of very high dimension, but that will allow us to understand how we will perform PCA for a particular data set and the tricks of that. And then I will move into a large data set which has really large dimension. So, to uh, perform PCA, I will use a inbuilt function PCA in R, but at the same time to visualize the PCA result. Uh, we will use a package called ggbyplot. So, here in the uh, script here which I will say share with everyone, uh, these uh, in instructions are written how to install ggbyplot from github. So, before you start using this script and practice this uh, problem, uh, please install uh, ggbyplot in your machine. So, the first step is obviously to read the data and uh, to ease our work, I have created a CSV file. So, I will read that as uh, that data and uh, get that data and store it into g dot data uh, variable. So, I am using a read dot CSV again. So, I have read the data. Uh, before I move into doing all this PCA, let us look into the data to understand what we have at hand. Uh, so, if I double click, uh, what I get is that okay, I have 5 columns. The first column is for groups, second column is for genes and the rest of the three column are drug 1, drug 2, drug 3. So, you can imagine maybe uh, you know different cell cell lines are treated with uh, uh, suppose a particular cell line is treated with a particular drug at different dose. So, drug 1, drug 2, drug 3 can be different doses or these three can be completely different drugs and you are treating some cell with that and then you have checked the expression, gene expression of certain gene starting from 1 to 6, right. So, for 6 gene, I have the data here, gene expression data, just imagine their gene expression data, although the values are very high, sometimes 5.5 or something like that. So, imagine these are uh, gene expression data. Uh, uh, so, for example, gene 1, when tre I treat cells uh, with drug 1 has 2.9 reading, whereas if for drug 3 it has uh, 8, so drug in expression of gene 1 has increased. Now, uh, what is group? Suppose from biology, I know this G1, G2, G3 belongs to a particular function, for example, maybe a lipid metabolism. So, I call them group A, right? These are these group belong to group A. Group A is lipid me metabolism group. Whereas, suppose G4, G5, G6 are involved in you know the uh, motion, locomotion of a cell, right? Or something else you imagine, right? So, that, that is group B. So, I have two groups and out of these two group, I have three genes each and their gene expression data in different, uh, uh, in total three gene uh, experimental condition, I have this data. So, it is a three dimensional data, right? I have three different experimental conditions, three variables, uh, dr uh, drug 1, drug 2, drug 3 and I have observation for six genes. So, now, if I want to visualize this data, Okay, I can create a three dimensional data, uh, three dimensional plot definitely, but you, you all know oh, visualizing three dimensional data and then make a meaning out of it is always not very easy. So, and also we have to learn PCA in with this example. So, what we will do, we will try to reduce it and be, make it two dimensional, right. So, I want to visualize the expression of these uh, uh, six genes in two dimensional space and that is why I will be doing PCA. So, uh, let us do perform the that PCA. So, now, in if you see the data, my numerical data which I have to reduce the dimension is from column 3 to column 5. So, I will extract that data first. So, what I am using, I am using the indexing. 
So I am leaving the row index empty that means I want all the row of the data for columns 3 to 5, 3 colon 5 right and I will store that data in variable D. So if you see this is my data now right. So I will perform this uh, PCA on this data set. To perform PCA I will be using inbuilt PRComp function right and what will be the arguments for that? Obviously, this data will be the first argument. So, D is the data and there are two other argument which are useful for PCA and quite important is that I want to center the data before you perform the PCA and also I want to scale the data. That means, I want to make the variance of each of these uh, variable to 1. Uh, so, that is why I have said scale equal to true, center equal to true right and I am using the pre -comp, uh, PR comp function with these arguments and the result of this PCA will be stored in a variable d dot PCA. So, PCA is done with a single click. Now, I want to see what it has created right. I will first uh, what I will do I will first uh, click into this uh, environment pane d dot PCA to see what uh, it is uh, storing. So, it is storing lots of information. For example, it is storing SDEV, possibly this is standard deviation. I will come back to it. It has something called rotation, center, scale, uh, those things. Now, to get a brief of this PCA, what I can do is I can actually use the summary function to get the summary of the PCA and that is quite useful. So, I will use summary function for D dot PCA and let us see in this console what is the summary. So, the summary says that okay, I have the three uh, co principal component PC1, PC2 and PC3. The standard deviation, remember we want the principal components are such that along those direction, along those vector, the variances are high, high, highest, right. So, they capture the highest variance of the in the data. So, the PCA or PC1 should have the highest variance, so it should have the highest standard deviation. So, it is 1.34. For PC2 standard deviation is uh, 1.0626 and for PC3 the standard deviation is very less. So, from looking at this it seems this PC1 and PC2 together are actually capturing most almost more, possibly 90 percent of the variance in my data. And also it has given the proportion of variance it has calculated. So, oh, 60 percent variance is captured by PC1 whereas 37 percent is captured by PC2 and PC3 capture only 0 0.018 that means 2 percent of the variance right. So, you can easily now see that PC1 and PC2 is the most important uh, principal component I can actually check up possibly PC3. So, we will pause it and uh, we will project the data and analyze the data along these uh, principal components. So, once I have uh, done that already I have got the proportions uh, or proportion of variances for each of these uh, principal component, but you may be uh, remembering that we have studied something called scree plot. In scree plot what we do? We represent the proportion of uh, variance right, proportion of variance explained by a particular principal component in the vertical axis and the principal components in the horizontal axis right. So, I want to plot that. So, to draw scree plot, there is a scree plot uh, function default in R, but I will not use that. I will uh, calculate uh, myself here and I will make a plot. So, what I will do? I have to calculate the variance captured by each of the principal component, variance associated with each of the principal component, but PCA uh, uh, output has given me standard deviation only. Now, variance is square of standard deviation right. So, what I am doing here? Uh, I am capturing the standard deviation S D from the PCA output. So, D dot PCA dollar sign S D. So, I am capturing the standard deviation for each of the principal component and then I am squaring it here right and then I am dividing the whole thing by sum of those square standard deviation right. So, then it will become proportion how much of the total variance is represented by a particular principal component right and I am storing that data in PV and I will plot that PV right. How I will plot? I will use the plot function. Uh, I am giving some name for the plot and uh, I am giving the labeling the x axis as principal component, y axis as PVE, the proportion of variance explained and I am using some symbol and color uh, that are given in the argument. So, let me plot this. So, I will plot it. 
let us zoom. So, now you can see as you can see here, this is the principal component. First principal component represent almost 60 percent of the variances, right? whereas the second principal component represent around 40 percent of this. So, together both of them are representing almost the 100 percent of the variance in the data, whereas the third component has very little contribution. Now, in this case, uh, it is very easy to identify that P C 1 and P C 2 should be the dimension where we should work because the third component has almost no contribution. So, we can simply remove the that third component from our subsequent analysis, right. But sometime it is not so easy to understand this type of plot, the P V E versus principal component plot. Rather, if I draw the cumulative plot, right then it becomes much easier to understand. So, I will do the cumulative plot for P V and plot it. So, to calculate get the cumulative plot of P V proportion of variance explained right what I have to do I have to calculate the cumulative sum right. So, to do that uh, I have the uh, C U M sum uh, cumulative sum function. So, I will use the P V data as the argument. So, it will calculate the cumulative sum for the P V data and I will store that in C P V and then I will plot that data in the same fashion. So, in this case now only the vertical axis will change it will be the cumulative P V. So, the plot is done here is the plot you can see. So, this is the cumulative plot. So, it is increasing and then becoming 1 right the because cumulative score will be value will be maximum only 1. So, by 2 by second component second principal component I can see the cumulative P V has reached almost 1. Again this plot says that I can actually remove principal component 3 I do not need it in my further analysis because it is not actually capturing much of the variance it is lit capturing very little of the variance. So, uh, I have decided that okay, I will work on P C 1 and P C 2 and remember that was my intention right. I had 3 dimensional data I want to reduce the dimension. So, that means if I plot my data now on this P C 1 and P C 2 space with horizontal axis P C 1 vertical axis P C 2 and I project my data in this space that will capture the behavior of the data I will not lose much information and I can reduce the dimension from 3 to 2 and I can plot that also. So, before I plot uh, let us see uh, something like what we call the we have learned earlier in P C A class that we have something called loading matrix and also scoring matrix right. So, what is loading matrix? Loading matrix gives me the contribution of each of the original variable here drug 1, drug 2, drug 3 are the original variable. So, their contribution to each of this principal component right that I want to know. So, that is called loading right. So, uh, what is uh, interesting here is actually in uh, PR comp in R they call it rotation they do not call it ro uh, loading. Uh, so, let me calculate that. So, I am extracting the rotation matrix which is essentially a loading matrix from the D dot PCA PCA result and I am storing that in assigning that to P dot load. So, let us open that P dot load ok. You see it is a matrix. So, P C 1, P C 2, P C 3 are the columns and the rows are the drug. So, now that it shows that drug 1 I have a 0.65. So, oh, and drug 2 also have 0.72. So, drug 1 and drug 2 has positive contribution good amount of positive contribution to P C 1 principal component 1 whereas, drug 3 has negative contribution and that negative contribution is also weak. Similarly, in case of P C 2 uh, both drug 1 and drug 2 has negative contribution in fact, drug 3 has a, a strong negative contribution whereas, drug 2 has a little positive contribution. So, this is the way I can understand from this loading matrix how the original variables are now hidden inside the P C 1 and P C 2 the principal components. Now, once I know this the second thing I have to know that ok fine I know the principal components I can uh, I want to now uh, plot that data to plot that I have to first project the data in this principal component right. Unless I project it uh, my dimensional reduction is not complete. So, I have to project my data in this new dimension this three principal component and to do that I have to calculate the scoring matrix and it is very easy because the PR function has already calculated the scoring matrix and it is uh, in the variable called x. So, I will extract that and I will uh, put it in uh, d dot score. 
So, here I have the uh, three principal component and six observation right if you remember six gene in this case right. So, this matrix is the projected data if you remember my original data I have six observation g 1 to g 6 and drag 1, drag 2, drag 3 are original dimension. In dimension 1 that is drag 1 dimension g 1 has a value of 2.9. Now, I have three new dimension, three different principal component and the g 1 is the 1. So, its value in that direction in the, in the direction of p c 1 is minus 0.9988 whereas, for the second uh, gene it is 1.15. Similarly, for gene 1 in p c 2 it is minus 1.21. So, if I now use this data and plot it along the p c 1 p c 2 space I should be able to see all my 6 data point in this space of principal component 1 and principal component 2. But I will not do it uh, so you know using trivial plot uh, function. What I will use? I will use a gg by plot. Plot the projected data. I am using uh, gg by plot. So I have already installed gg by plot in my uh, machine. So I will load it in my workspace. Now I will be calling gg by plot. Uh, function to plot this projected data in p c 1 and p c 2. So, how to do that? I have to assign certain arguments right. So, for the g g by plot the first argument will be obviously, the p c a data that is the d dot p c a and then in choices I am choosing the principal component I want to plot. In this example, I have three principal component 1, 2 and 3, but I have already decided principal component 3 is useless. So, I want to see it in only p c 1 and p c 2. So, that is what I am written c 1 2. So, uh, I am I want g g by plot to plot the data in principal component 1 and principal component 2. And then you have some uh, other uh, uh, arguments like observation scale equal to 1, variable scale equal to 1. So, you are saying that do not change the scales of the observation and variables, retain them, these are by default. There is something label uh, argument here, I will explain it, but before that let me plot it, then it will be easier to explain what uh, this label is doing. So, what I will do, uh, I will call the g by plot function with these uh, arguments and uh, the plot object will be created that will be stored in p 1 and then I will pl uh, print the p 1, then only I will get the uh, figure. Let me zoom it. Okay. So, this is my plot. So, I have p c 1 in the horizontal axis, p c 2 in the vertical axis and it has written that 60.5 percent of the variance in my data is explained by p c 1. We also calculated that few seconds back and it is also saying 37.6 percent of the variation in my data is explained by p c 2. And this uh, arrows uh, are actually the original variable. Now, you may have noticed here that this uh, uh, drug word has got cut here, drug has got cut here. So, the labels had got cut. So, what I will do? I will just change the scale of this plot a bit so that I can accommodate all the labels. So, to do that what I am doing? I am saying that okay, you take the original plot object p 1 and then you change the limit for x that is x axis from minus 1 to minus 2 and also change the y limit the y axis limits from minus 2 to minus uh, positive 2 and you do it on this p 1. So, I am just adding them by uh, summation sign. So, now I will print it. I hope it will be much better. Let us see. Okay. Now, I can see the labels. right? So, what these arrows means? These arrows represent the original variables right? drug 1, drug 2, drug 3 and their contribution to the principal component. Let me explain it. So, what I have I if I uh, take the loading matrix, you can see p c drug 1 positively contribute to p c 1 and negatively contribute to p c 2. Okay, let me look into the plot. So, drug 1 arrow is on the positive side of p c 1 right 0 is here. So, on this side right hand side it will be positive. So, the arrow is pointing towards the positive side of p c 1, but it is also at the same time pointing 
towards the negative side of PC2. So, by this arrow I can understand that drug 1 which is the origin one of the original variable has this type of contribution to PC1 and PC2. So, in a way these lines, these vectors drawn over here for drug 1, drug 2, drug 3 which are the original variable are nothing but representation of the loading matrix. Now, what are these G1, G4, G6 all these things? These are my original data point, right? My original data points are uh, data for gene 1, gene 2, gene 5 up to gene 6. What I have done here rather than using symbol, I could have used like circles, square, triangle for each data point. I have used the name of the genes, the label of the gene itself as the symbol. That helps because then I can easily identify, okay, this one is G1, this one is G6, something like that. I do not need to use a separate symbol for that. And to achieve that, what I have done, I have put an argument specifically while calling GG by plot. What I have said, I have said make the labels, make the labels equal to G dot data column 2. What is in column 2? In column 2, I have the gene names G1 to gene 6. So, now ggbyplot has not used any symbol as a label, rather it has used the, uh, the, the column 2 information that is the name of the genes as the label and has la uh, in place of symbol has put those num uh, gene number gene G1, G2 up to G6. Now, another important information was there in our data is that Okay, some of the genes belongs to group A, some of the genes belong to group B. Now, I, if I want to see that grouping inside this my uh, plot, this principal component plot, so how can I do that? So, again I will use gg by plot, uh, but in this case I will use an option called groups. So, if you look into the script what I have here, same gg by plot I am calling the same deep dot PCA data original data I am choosing principal component 1 and 2 scales remain 1 I am labeling with the column 2 data as a label for the data points in the plot and here I am adding something extra I am saying group the data so groups equal to g dot data first column right what is in first column I have first column, I have the group information. So, I am asking you group this data and color code them based on this grouping, fine. And another thing I have added, sometimes you know these uh, uh, arrows representing this vector, representing the original variable are quite disturbing, they does not add to our observation, understanding of the plot. So, I am setting it as false. So, var dot a axis equal to false. So, now let us create the object, run it and then plot it. Okay, now, I get a neat plot. You can see gene 1, gene 2, gene 3 are now in pink and here in the legend they are saying it is A, group A. Whereas, 4, 5 and 6 belongs to group B, that is why they have blue color. Right? So, in this way, I have color coded the data in group and I can see where they lie in this new dimension PC1 and P versus PC2. Now, this is with a, a very synthetic a cook, home cooked data to explain what I, how to perform PCA and how to uh, visualize the data, right. Now, I will move into a large data set where actually dimension is very high and I will be using uh, that NCI 60 data set that we have used earlier for clustering problem. If, if you remember that has a data for uh, 64 cell line, cancer cell line, right? And uh, uh, all those uh, cancer cell line, they have measured the ex gene expression of something like 6,832 uh, 30 genes or something like that. So, that means you have a huge dimension, 6,800 dimension, that gene number of dimension, right? You can never visualize it, right? But we believe that based on this gene expression information, I can actually identify different cell type, different cancer cell type and that is what we have got in clustering also, right. Uh, some of the uh, clusters are very homogeneous where we observe that uh, cell type of similar cancer are clubbed together in one cluster. So, now many a time it is useful for visualization first of all to reduce the dimension from this 6000 dimension to 2 dimension or 3 dimension. So, I have to use PCA. At the same time, sometime it is much better to perform PCA first and then perform clustering on the data 
projected on some selected PCA. That gives us better grouping, better uh, you know separation of different objects in different clusters. So, what I will do? I will perform the PCA on that NCI uh, 60 data set. So, we, we already have that in CSV format. So, I will read that data. It takes a few seconds to read. Now, I have to prepare the data, right? Just to see the data once again. Okay, so, I have the first column is for the name of the cell line, the other uh, the type of the cell line, CNS, uh, renal, breast, so breast mean breast cancer cell line, something like that. And these uh, uh, other columns are different genes and we have 6,830 6, such columns, right, uh, such genes. So, that information is there. So, now, I if to perform PCA, I have to remove the first column because that does not give the gene expression data, right. Uh, so, what I am doing, I am extracting that column as label data. So, G dot label, I am extracting the first column here and then I am telling R that, okay, get rid of the first column and save rest of the column as G dot data on which I will perform PCA. So, now I have got uh, g dot data on which I will perform PCA. Again, I will use PR comp and I will keep the center and scale true and I am performing on the data g dot data, right? And that whole output will be stored in g dot PCA. So, it is done. Now, I want to see the scree plot, right? So, I am not doing uh, uh, summary here because it will have large number of principal component and that may be, um, that makes the console bit messy. So, rather than that, I will go directly for scree plot. Again, just uh, we did for the earlier data set, we will calculate the variance for each principal component from the standard deviation and then divide by some of the variance to get the proportion of variance explained and that will be stored in uh, PV. So, that is what we are doing in this line and then I will plot that PV versus number uh, different principal components right, from 1 to uh, the rest. So, here it is the plot function I am calling. Let us look into it. Okay. So, this is a neat uh, scree plot. You can see maybe possibly up to around 8 or 9 principal component we have to consider. Uh, because uh, only after that it becomes very low. So, just principal component 1 and 2 will not actually capture all the variation in the data and all the information of the data. That is obvious because it is a quite a large dimensional system, not like the earlier one we have just 3 uh, variables, right? It has thousands of variables. So, maybe we have to go up to 10 or 9 uh, principal component to capture the overall behavior uh, reasonably. Now, as I said earlier, it sometimes becomes difficult to understand the uh, PV versus principal component plot. Rather, if we plot the cumulative one, that becomes much easier to understand. So, let me plot that one in the same fashion using the cumulative sum function and then plotting that data. So, here is the cumulative PV plot and as you can see, maybe up to not just 10, maybe up to you have to go up to 15 or something to capture the 60 percent of the variation. So, I may have to go up to principal component uh, 15 or something to capture the 60 percent of the variation in the data. Now, that is a different case whether how far we will go. Let me now make the projection plot, let me project this data on first component, principal component 1 and principal component 2, you can do that on other components also, right. So, to do that, again I will use gg by plot. So, already I have loaded gg by plot, so I do not need to load or rather let me run it once again. So, I have loaded. Now, I want gg by plot to project my 64 sample, I have 64 cell line data, right, on principal component 1 and 2. So, what is my first argument? My first argument is the PCA data, G dot PCA, right? And then I am saying that cho my choice is principal component 1 and 2. In this case, you may take 3, 4, something like that also, because even up to uh, principal component 15, they are quite important, it seems. And uh, what I have done here, I have uh, said the variance dot axis, uh, sorry, variable dot axis, the variable axis is the vectors as false. Why I have done that? because I have 6830 variables. 
if I show those arrows, the whole space will get covered by arrow. It does not make any sense. So, I am saying do not plot it. So, I have made it false, right? And let me create the plot. Let us see. So, now this is the plot. PC1 is representing only 11.4 percent, whereas PC2 is represent 6.8 percent. And all these data points, these black field dots are essentially those 64 cell lines. Now, you may be wondering why I have not labeled them with names or something like that. I have not done that because the name of each of these cell lines are not single letter, but suppose renal or uh, leukemia, something like that quite big. And if I write them on this plot, this plot will look ugly. So, rather than that, I have chosen, I have allowed ggbyplot to use symbol. The default symbol it has used is the black field circles. So, how what I have done actually, I have not used any label argument while calling ggbyplot. And that is why it has used the default uh, uh, label for plotting the data and use the field circle with black color. Now, uh, you may wonder that that does not give me a clear picture, right? It will be good that somehow if I can represent each of the dot of each of the cell line. So, yes, that is what I will do now. What I will do? I will color these dots based upon which cell line they belong to, which cell type they belong to, right? For example, all renal cell line, cancer cell line will be given a particular color. So, all dots that belong to renal uh, cell line data point will become that color, will have that, that color. How I will do that? To I will use that option of groups that we used in the earlier example. So, now here I am saying calling gg by plot again and I am choosing principal component 1 and 2, everything is remaining same, variable axis is false. I am just adding this groups argument again and now I am asking to take the label. If you remember, we have extracted the label, the first column of the data set as label for the data and I am saying use that label to group my data, right? So, that is what it will do, it will group the data based on that labels and then put each group unique color and it will visual, be visualized in the plot. So, here I plot it. Let me zoom it. Now, you can see a nice plot here. So, uh, PC1, PC2 remain same. Only thing it has changed is that the color of each of these dot. For example, this leukemia is a, a green uh, thing. So, possibly these are the leukemia one the uh, NSCLC are here, right? And these unknowns are here. So, in this way by using the group option, group argument, I have colored each of the cell lines based upon which group or which cell type belongs to, right? That uh, bring, this brings us to the end of this lecture. But before I end, let me point out one common mistake sometimes people uh, do in hurry is that here looking at this data, you can easily see some green points are forming some sort of cluster, some blue point are forming some sort of cluster and you may get tempted to say, okay, I have achieved clusters. No, principal component is not for clustering. What we have achieved? We have reduced the dimension. I had 6830 dimension. From that, I have reduced it to lower dimension. Maybe I can go up to the 15 first principal component or up to 20 first principal component. Even then, the number 15 or 20 is much lesser than 6830, right? So, PCA has uh, allow us to reduce the dimension. It does not allow or does not tell us where the cluster uh, exists, if there is cluster in the data or not. It does not do that. While plotting this PCA plot, by chance you may see some cluster, but that is not the result of the algorithm. That is because of how the data are, but it, that is not actually the cluster, the way we understand the, the, as a cluster generated by clustering algorithms. So, what you have to do, if you really want the cluster, whether you want to see whether based on this gene expression, I can get cluster of cell line or not, you have to use some clustering algorithm like hierarchical clustering algorithm or k-means clustering algorithm that we have learned earlier. Now, rather than using the original gene expression data, you may use the projected data, the scoring matrix data as input for this clustering algorithms and then you can cluster the data. That is all. Thank you for learning with me today.